Welcome to the Marketplace Source Supplier Training. To complete a Visient procurement, you will need a username and password to log into Marketplace Source. Now, if you've completed a Visient procurement with us in the past, please just use your existing username and password to complete any new procurements. However, if you're a new user or if you have an existing account and you've requested a password reset with us, you will be auto-emailed a username and temporary password from admin at mtaurus.com. All other procurement auto-emails are sent from Marketplace Source Marketplace, Marketplace Source at vizientinc.com. To ensure you receive these notifications, monitor and check your spam folder. If either message type routes there, designate it as safe in your IT software so that all future Vizient auto emails properly filter to your inbox. Once a procurement is activated, you will receive an auto invitation to log in and complete the procurement. Marketplace Source was built for best functionality when using the Internet Explorer web browser. So using Internet Explorer, please log in to MarketplaceSource.com, enter your username, your password, and then click the sign in button. Once you're logged in, you may see a screen such as this one. Click the Virtual Supply Master tab. Find your name, click the drop-down box, and click into Preferences. You should always set all of your preferences, but at a minimum, please set your time zone to the time zone of which you work and live. I live in Irving, Texas, so my time zone is set to America, Chicago, Central Standard Time. Set your landing application to Sourcing. This ensures that upon future logins, you're sent straight to the area where your procurements are located and not to the Preferences Setup section. Lastly, be sure to set your security question. Setting your security question will allow you to do your own self-help password reset in future logins if you need to without having to contact Visient staff. Click OK to save. You can click into your inbox to see if there are any messages for you. You can also check your inbox from up here too. You can click your profile and take a look and make any applicable changes that you might want to make. And lastly, click into the sourcing tab now to see where your active procurements are located. If you don't see them, click bids, view RFXs, or over here, make sure you click open for any open procurements. We're going to do this one today, so I'm going to click View Respond to the RFX to enter that particular procurement. Once in the procurement, I'm going to click Accept. I'll get a pop-up box to accept the invitation, and I'll click OK. Notice that the contact information here on the left is the person that's in charge of your procurement. The time clock on the right with the open and close date, if you set your time zone properly in preferences, the clock will be synchronized to your time zone and you'll know exactly uh, what time it's going to close. Now the first thing we need to do is look at the attachments and messages to see if there's any relevant information that we need to read prior to the bid opening. So click into attachments. And you can just click right into the file and you can download, you can open or save it to your laptop for reading. Now during the procurement, if you need to send us an attachment, then you would just click into that same attachments area. You can click add, you get a pop-up box, and you click browse, find the file that you want to upload, give it a name, Notice the file size limitation listed here, and then you can add more, up to five if you'd like, and then you can just click Save. Now let's click into Messages. You'll get a pop-up box, and you can see any received messages. You can just click right on in. You'll get an expanded box, and you can read the message. You can also see a history of any messages that you have sent to us. And then notice that you can do it 
for all or within certain days. If you have a question during the procurement and you need to send us a message, just click into Messages and click Create. You get a pop-up box. Please select the recipient that you want to send it to and click OK. Type in a subject, type in a message, and then if you need to upload an attachment as part of that message to us, click Attachments. You'll get a pop-up box. Click Add. You'll get another box. Browse. Find the attachment you want to upload give it a name, and then either add more, up to five, with this file size limitation, and then click Save. And when you do that, the zero here on Attachments will change to a one or more, depending on the number of attachments you uploaded. And then you can click Send, and we will get the message, and we will reply within the portal back to you. And now that we've taken care of that housekeeping, we're ready to complete the procurement. In Visient RFPs, you are all, always asked to complete both a non-financial and a financial section. If you're completing an RFI, it may just be a non-financial financial section. So we will go over both. For non-financials, you would click the questionnaire tab, and then you will see the items that we would like for you to respond to. So let's click this first box and we'll get another pop-up box, and then we can just complete the information that's asked of us in this questionnaire box. Notice that to the right of each question, there is a paperclip icon. If you need to attach supplemental information in addition to your answered question, you can just click that paperclip icon. You'll get a pop-up box. You can click Add. Click the file you want to upload give it a name, and then you can either add more and then save. And when you do that, you will see that this zero will change to a one or a higher number, depending on the number of files that you uploaded there. Then you click save, and that will answer the questions and include any of the attachments that you uploaded. So let's go ahead and click save. Okay, and change is saved successfully, and then we're going to close. And notice back here in my questionnaire tab that when I properly save a section, the color turns to green and it allows me not only to revise my response by clicking back into it with a pop-up box and resaving it, I can also hit the view history and it will show me what I did in that box and saved previously. Now, you would go through and complete each section of the questionnaire and save it. And that concludes the non-financial portion of the procurement. Now, for the financial portion of the procurement, you will be asked to do one of two things. You will be asked to complete an Excel file, which is located in the Attachments section, or you will be asked to complete the single or multi-bid financial bid sections. And it will be one or the other not both, in our RFPs. Now let's take a look. If you check your attachments areas and you see a price file uploaded, then that's how we're asking you to complete the financial portion. So you would just click into the price file, you would download it, and save it to your laptop, complete it, and then when you're ready to send it back to us, then you would just go into Attachments, you would click Add, and then you would click Browse and find your price file and load it up, give it a name, and click Save. And we would receive the financial portion of your bid, um, and it would be located. And you would see it saved up here in the Attachments area if you saved it properly. If we do not have a price file located in that attachment area, then you will be required to complete it in the single bid and or multi-bid area. Let's take a look at the single bid first. In the single bid section, in this example, we have 30 items that we would like for you to bid on. And that number, the number of total number of items will be listed right here on the left. In this example, 
The lot is listed here, cervical plate screw. And within that lot, we have three items for you to bid on, all different sized items. To make a bid on the first item of the cervical plate screw lot, you just click the red tab and it, you'll get a pop-up box. And then it has a description up here. And then you can just enter in the required things that we've asked you to do here. And then you can save bid and go to the next item. And it will just go to the very next item. Or you can just click save. It'll ask you if you're sure you want to submit the bid. You click OK and it will be submitted. And then you can close out. And then you can click the revised bid history and it will pop a box up and show you what you bid. And then you can revise that bid at a later date if you would like to do so. Now, the same information that we have in the single bid tab is also in the multi-bid tab. It's just a different view. So you can choose this one or this one, not both to complete because they are the same information and they will populate. So let's click and see what the multi-bid tab looks like. It looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Anything, we, we just saved that first one in the single bid area and that's why you see this number located here because we had done a save over here. So it's the same information. And notice that we had 30 items in the single bid information and it's still the same here. It's 30 items total. It just takes two pages to place those 30 items in this view format. So item number one through 20 of 30 total items is on page one. And if you scroll down, you can you know, see that that is there. Now, notice the lot name, cervical plate screw. If you put your cursor straight over the little black area of the lot name, it'll expand and you can get the full um, explanation of what that particular lot is. And then the items within each lot are in blue. So this is a new lot here with three more items in that lot. So if you click on one of the blue items, it will give you a pop-up box and it will tell you exactly what the lot is and exactly what the item is that we want you to bid on. So again, here's the four by 10. And what you would do is you would just place your bid in this area. When you finished all of area one, and you, we may have questions in there too for you to answer. When you finished all of those for page one, then to save it, you would save it by the entire page. And you would need to click Save by clicking the red Submit Bids button. That saves that entire page. You need to do this before you go on to any additional pages. So let's click the red Submit button. You'll get a pop-up box and asking you to submit your bid. You click OK. And then you'll get Saved Bids. And it's telling you, here's your confirmation that page was saved and you click OK and then go to the next page. If you enter information on page one and you do not hit the red submit button to save that page and you just went straight to the next page, it would not save that bid information and when you went back to page one it would be blank. So the red submit button saves your bids by the page. So you would need to do that for every page in this bid. Uh, most of our suppliers, they like the multi-bid area better. They, I think some of them think it's quicker, but you know, single bid is a favorite for some too. So you can just make your choice and, um, complete, and complete the procurement. Now, that concludes our portion of how to complete a procurement um, in this RFP example, on live online. If you need to respond offline and then upload your completed data, then you would go and click the questionnaire tab, look straight across the blue marine bar to respond offline. Click respond offline. You get a pop-up box, download offline bidding template. Click OK and then click export. You'll get a pop-up box and it's running. So continue clicking the refresh button 
until it says done. And then you can download it and save it. on your laptop. Once you save it, you can bring it up, click Enable Editing, and read the template instructions. It's, it's important that you follow these template instructions. At the bottom, you'll see three tabs. The Question Response tab and the Table Response tab are all part of that questionnaire tab that we had when we were looking at it online. Click the red to, to get in additional information on how to complete the procurement. In this particular one, it wants us to select with a drop-down box. So you would select and it would tell you whether you've answered the question or whether the question is open to be completed by you. If we had set up a table in the questionnaire, then you, when you click table response, your table will be in there and you would go and you would complete your table. And again, you can click on the red dots to expand additional information. The bid RFP tab is the financial portion of the RFP example that we've been discussing. Here you can see the lot, the cervical plate screw, and these are the items within that lot. And then here is where you would complete your bid information. And then you would save it. So the item in the, the information in purple is given by us. The information in white you would need to complete and save and then upload back to us. To upload an offline bidding response, you would just go you would log back into the to the uh, procurement, click the questionnaire tab, look across, click respond offline, and click import bids, and then OK. Find your file that you want to import, and then just click import. You'll get a pop up box that it's running. Click the refresh key until it says done. When it says done, then it will be populated live within your bid and you'll be able to see that those responses were imported. If something happened to the template, if you did something that maybe perhaps corrupted the template, when you went to hit the refresh key to bring it back in, you might get a failed notification. If you do, click the blue failed notification and it will pop up a pop-up box and it will have your error message describe to you on what the problem is so that you can go in and make that repair and then re-upload it again. Final supplier training information. For technical assistance logging in or using Marketplace Source, email admin at marketplacesource.com. Questions during the quiet period must go through our messaging center, so you would need to send a message through our portal like we discussed earlier. If we are not in a quiet period and an, uh, you know, the RFP is not active, then you can just contact your Vizient portfolio executive or you can send an email to supplier training at Vizient.com. We hope this information has been helpful to you and we appreciate your time and listening to this video.